In today's video, we're going to be having a look at how to integrate the Lemetric Time into Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. If you've never seen the Lemetric Time before, essentially it's this thing just here. It's this block shaped clock with a very pretty LED front panel. And despite its name of Lemetric Time, telling the time and being a clock is just one of its features. The time's main feature is its ability to modify and change its clock face based on an action or an event that happens. And this could be anything, this could be a bit of media that's playing or connected to the time, or it could be a notification from your smartphone, or in our case, a notification from our smart home. At the time of recording this video, you can pick the Lemetric Time up for around £169 or $199 directly from either the Lemetric website or from Amazon. If you are interested in picking one of these up for yourself, you'll find all the links in the description below. Inside the box, you'll find the time unit itself, as well as an adaptable charger head and a micro USB cable for power. This device doesn't have any kind of internal battery, so it is going to be mains powered. You'll also find a small instructions manual that's going to guide you through the setup process. And speaking of the setup process, the setup process is one of those simple use the app and set it up. So all you'll need to do is just create a little metric time account, sign into the app and then pair it directly with the time unit. Once you've got everything paired up, you'll be able to access the Lemetric market. And from here, you can add different apps and clock faces, as well as connect the time to different services like Amazon Echo, Google Assistant, Slack, and if this, then that. The time features this black bar design and it almost looks like a Bluetooth speaker. And in actual fact, it does actually operate as a Bluetooth speaker and features stereo speakers. However, I wouldn't purchase this thing for the ability of being a Bluetooth speaker, just because it's not all that powerful. On max volume, the time does sound a little bit flat and there's no real bass to it. So it's not going to be anything that replaces or rivals your smart home speakers, but it is a nice feature to have if that's something that you're looking for. And if you do connect it to Bluetooth, you also get a nice little audio visualizer on the screen. On both the left and right hand sides of the time, you'll find those speaker grills for the stereo speakers. On the left hand side, you'll also find some volume adjustment buttons. And on the right hand side, you'll find the power button. At the top of the unit, you'll find three buttons a left and right button and also a center action button. The buttons at the top are all used to cycle through the different clock faces and apps and the center button is used to select different settings within those apps. At the rear of the device you'll find the Lemetric logo as well as the micro USB port used for powering the device and also an audio out if you wanted to plug this thing in to some additional speakers. At the front of the device which will be the focal point of this thing you'll find two different LED panels. On the left hand side you'll find an 8x8 LED grid and on the right hand side you'll find a 29x29 grid. The two different sections of the screen are used for different parts. So the first part, the little 8x8 grid, is usually used for some kind of picture or icon and the right hand side is the main part. So this will be the part where it's a bit of text or a main bit of content, maybe it's your clock or the audio visualizer. So that's what the time is and kind of what it does. Now let's have a look at the Home Assistant side. I was recently bugging the legend that is Frank about finishing the Lemetric integration that he'd started a while ago and he finished it. So since Home Assistant 2022.9, we've had this lovely Lemetric integration for Home Assistant that following the pursuit of Home Assistant, it's streamlined and it's very easy to set up and install. The workflow is very simple and with a couple of clicks, you can get this thing added to Home Assistant. And best of all, it's all local. Okay, let's get this thing added into Home Assistant then. So over at Home Assistant, we're gonna select settings and then we're gonna choose devices and services. From here, we're gonna select the blue add integration button in the bottom right hand corner. And in the box that appears, we're just gonna start typing Lemetric. As we start doing that, we should see Lemetric appear in the list. So we're just gonna go ahead and select that. And when we do that, we'll see this pop-up asking us to set up the Lemetric integration. And one of the options we have here is to import it directly from Lemetric.com. Let's go ahead and do that one. When we select that option, it's gonna take us over to the Lemetric developer page. And from here, all we're gonna to need to do is set up and create a developer account. And all of this is free and very simple to do. And we just do that by selecting the don't have an account option. That's then gonna take you through the setup process of setting up and creating another account. With your new developer account set up and created, you can enter your credentials and then just choose sign in. You'll then see this prompt asking you to authorize Home Assistant. And we're just gonna select the orange allow button. You'll then hopefully hear a little ping from your Lemetric time and then a little text banner will appear on the device telling you that it's connected to Home Assistant. 
And back on your PC, you'll hopefully see this Nabucasa screen that will tell you everything's done and you can close the window. If you did hear that sound and see the screen, back over at Home Assistant, you'll see the little success message and you'll see your Lumetric device here ready to be added. I just left mine with the default name, which happens to be my Lumetric. So I'm just going to assign this to an area and select finish. With that done, I can now see my Lumetric in my integrations card list here. And if I select the device, I'll be able to see everything that's associated with it. From here, you can see I've got a couple of different configuration options. So I've got a button here that I can use to press next. And this simulates that right hand button on the top of the device. And I've also got one for previous app, which is again, the left hand button. There's also a volume slider here. So if you were using it to play music, you could also adjust the music that's being played here. So at this point now, you should have your Lumetric time in Home Assistant. And this is where the fun's gonna start. Having those three different options to control the device is nice, but as I mentioned earlier on, the main feature of this thing is its ability to control and modify the LED screen in order to present some kind of notification. And that's exactly what you get with the Home Assistant integration. You'll now have this new service called Notify Mylometric, and using this service, you're able to pass notifications from Home Assistant directly to the device and have them presented on the screen. And best of all, this is all done locally, so there's no cloud required. Sending a notification is very quick and simple. You just need to select the Notify Mylometric as the service. Then in the message, you just need to enter the message body and whatever you enter here is gonna be presented on the screen. So if we just select Call Service there, you should hopefully see that message appear on your Lumetric Time device. If you only pass the message parameter, you'll see the Home Assistant icon followed by whatever your notification message was and that will just scroll on past and that will only happen once. But what happens if you want this to play a couple of times or you want to change that icon? Well, again, you can do this. Over at the Home Assistant integrations page, if you check out the Lumetric integration, you'll see a list of all the different configuration variables that you can apply. So if you wanted to change the icon, you could do that. If you wanted to adjust the amount of cycles, so the amount of times that that text is going to scroll past, you can do that. If you set this cycle to be zero, it's going to just indefinitely play and you're going to need to manually press the button on the top of the device or simulate that button press in order to actually clear the notification. And this is very useful if you wanted to do some kind of persistent notification. Maybe you wanted a notification to remind you to do something and you want that to just always be there until you clear it. Some of the additional parameters you've got are the things like priority, the icon type and also the sound. And again, with the sound, just like the icon, there's a whole bunch of different sounds that you can utilize. And if you include a sound, when that notification plays, you're gonna just hear that little sound effect, which is just a nice additional thing that you can use with your notifications. And just to show you how easy it is, let's just quickly write an automation together where we're actually gonna use some of those configuration variables. Back over at Home Assistant, we're gonna select automations and scenes. And from here, we're just gonna select create automation. And we're gonna to choose to start with an empty automation. We now just need to fill in our trigger condition and action. So let's start with the trigger. For this trigger, we're gonna be using the state of the person mark what, and when this changes to home, we're gonna have this trigger. For this example, we're not gonna bother with the condition, but for that action, we're gonna be using that new service that we talked about. So select add action and call service. Then in the box for service, if you just start typing notify, you should see an option for notify my Lumetric. So select that one. In here, we're now gonna to need to provide the data for our notification. So let's start with a message. And this is just gonna be the message that actually displays on the screen. So for this one, I'm just gonna simply type Mark is home. For our notification, we don't need to provide the title or target as we only have the one time unit. For the data option, we're gonna to need to select the little tick box next to it. With that selected, we can now start adding the additional parameters to our notification. So if you remember before, the default notification had the Home Assistant icon and just a bit of text. So let's spice that up a little bit. The first thing we're gonna do is just modify the sound. So we're actually gonna add a sound to our notification. To do this, we just type sound and then colon. And then by looking up the list of different sounds, we can just select one that we like. So I'm gonna go with thunder. The next thing that we wanna change with our notification is the icon. And we can actually look up the list of different available icons using the Lumetric developer website. And you can actually do a search if there's a particular thing that you wanna search for. In my case here, I'm just gonna search for home. I can then see a little preview of all the different animated icons. So I can just find one that I like the look of. And then when I select it, you'll see it's giving me the icon ID here. So in my case here, it's 8659. And if I head back to Home Assistant, I can simply add the icon by typing icon colon, then in quotations, the ID number of the icon that I wanna add. 
The final thing that I want to change with this notification is the number of cycles. So this is the number of times that the message is going to run through on the display before it stops. To do this, I'm just going to type cycles and then colon. And then the number that I type here is going to be the number of cycles that it actually runs through on the screen. So if I type five, it's going to run through it five times. But again, if I wanted this to be a persistent notification or for it to just consistently keep displaying, I could type zero. So with the cycles added, that's my notification now done. So if I select save, I can name the automation and give it a little description and then just hit save again. Now in the top right corner, if I choose the three dots and hit run, I should see that notification appear on the Lumetric time. One thing I have noticed with the notifications is that if you include the sound, it only plays the sound on the first cycle of the notification, which I guess is probably kind of good because if you had it going indefinitely, you'd constantly have this thunder sound effect going or whatever sound effect you chose to use. You can mix and match any of those icons and sound effects and you can create lots of weird and wonderful notifications. If you happen to have one of these or you're planning on getting one, then let me know in the comments below what kind of notification you're going to be creating. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at the Lumetric Time and how to get it into Home Assistant. If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create videos like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. If you want to see some other Home Assistant based content that I've done, then go and check out this playlist just here. Or if you're after a really fun Home Assistant project to work on yourself, then definitely check out this video just here. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.